whatever. Um, you know, in the case where child abuse is fatal, it, it, obviously it's not good for the child, but it's actually a benefit to society because there aren't needed for government services and whatnot over the whole course of that child's life. Through the chair, can you say that again to say a benefit for society? Um, talking dollars. Now you've got yes. a, a $1.5 million price tag here for uh, victims of fatal child abuse. Um, it, it gets argued periodically that it's actually um, a cost savings because that child is not going to need any of those government services that uh, they might otherwise um, you know, be entitled to receive and, and need based on you know, growing up in this type of environment. You heard that correctly. That was Republican Representative David Eastman from Wasilla, Alaska. He is a state representative, a Republican, a so-called pro-lifer, making the case before the State House Judiciary Committee that it is actually a net benefit, financially speaking, of course, for a child. This was almost hard to even believe that he said this, for a child to be killed versus being a financial burden to the tune of $1.5 million throughout their life to the system. I want you to listen again, and I'm going to allow it to continue playing so that you can see the reaction from other representatives who were as appalled and taken aback by David Eastman. Take a listen in again. Through the chair, can you say that again to say a benefit for society? Um, talking dollars. Now you've got yes. a, a $1.5 million price tag here for uh, victims of fatal child abuse. Um, it, it gets argued periodically that it's actually um, a cost savings because that child is not going to need any of those government services that uh, they might otherwise um, you know, be entitled to receive and, and need based on you know, growing up in this type of environment. Through the chair, uh, Representative, I guess that would be the idea, if I can use a really bad analogy, when you hit somebody, you always back up because uh, it's cheaper to insurance. I don't pertain to that, and I'm really, uh, I'm not even sure how to answer that, that there's a cost saving to, for uh, to the death of a child. The impact that that has on a family and us as a society when a child is lost, especially to child abuse and neglect, is unmeasurable. Now, that was a reaction from one of the fellow members of the committee stating the obvious. To make that comparison for David Eastman, a Republican, a member of the pro-life party, right? The party that is so concerned with the life of children that they are banning abortions all across this country. He made the comparison, made the analysis. He thought it was the intellectually astute thing to do to come before the American people in the state of Alaska and say that perhaps we should consider the cost benefit analysis of letting children die from abuse. I think it's very clear to anyone who's paying attention at this point that these people are not pro-life. They have never been, they are pro-birth, but once you're born, you are on your own. And I think this is perhaps one of the best examples of that, that an, a duly elected representative would stand before his other members and declare that we should take in consideration the fact that it is a cost savings to society to the tune of $1.5 million if a child dies of abuse. And uh, the way that you're calculating this 1.5 million, and when I say you, I mean the, the people who did calculate it, um, does that 1.5 million get higher or lower um, depending upon the age at which the child uh, is killed? So uh, again, there's multiple factors and uh, a number can definitely increase, but again, I don't believe it's going to matter if they're older or younger. Again, a loss of a child is really unmeasurable. Now, earlier when I first reported on this during our podcast, I discussed this from the perspective of what happens when conservatives are charged or tasked with having to make indefensible arguments. When a Republican takes, a conservative takes a position that is so ridiculous that it corners them and they are forced to make absurd arguments like this. I, I gave this guy, David Eastman, a little bit of cover, making it a problem of all conservatives, because when you have to defend cutting off support for children, when you have to defend all of the absurd, hypocritical, bigoted, racist policies, economically unsound policies that come from the conservative movement in this country, you will find yourself making ludicrous 
arguments that are as absurd as the one we just heard. But the fact of the matter is, is that the Republican David Eastman has a lot more going on than just disingenuous and bad faith arguments. As you're here in this response clip from Representative Andrew Gray, a Democrat from District 2 of Alaska, that is the Anchorage area. Listen to this response. He and his husband have a, adopted a, an at-risk child who was abused. And so as he sat there, this representative sat there and listened to the Republican so-called pro-life conservative Christian make the case that it is a benefit to society if that child dies, he was taken aback. This father was taken aback because of the absurdity, not only the absurdity of the argument, but the nature of the individual who made the argument himself. Representative Gray. Thank you, Madam Speaker. On the topic of an anniversary. Representative Gray, anniversary. Four years ago today, on February 22nd, 2019, my husband and I officially adopted our son from the foster system, although we had been fostering him for years prior to that. Two days ago, I introduced my son as a guest to this body. And that very afternoon on Judiciary Committee, I sat next to a fellow House member from District 27 who implied that the death of a child like mine might be a cost savings to the state. It is important to remember regarding that member from Wasilla that over the years he has shown Alaska who he is, posting on his website a photo of himself standing next to a quote from Adolf Hitler that calls for the extermination of people. And yet he has been reelected three times to his seat. So when he says that the death of an abused child might be in the interest of the state, he is speaking as the duly elected representative of his district. But when he utters those words sitting next to me, and those words are aired on television and then clipped and shared for all the world to see. He brings the dignity of this body into question. He has brought great shame on this house. It is incumbent upon all of us to do something. We cannot allow such atrocious, indefensible language to go undenounced. We must speak out in defense of the dignity of this body, but also as a parent, I must defend the value of all those children like mine, whose lives are valuable, whose deaths are not in the best interest of the state, whose inherent worth as human beings are the very reason we sit here today. We must respond as a body. We must do something. This body must act. Madam Speaker, I move and ask unanimous consent that Representative David Eastman be censured for offensive, insulting, and unsubstantiated statements that undermine the dignity of the House. So it would appear that David Eastman, the Republican, the pro-lifer, I'm sure an evangelical who claims to be doing the work of God. To be clear, this individual has a record of making outrageous and outlandish statements and arguments, so much so that Everyone, according to Andrew Gray, already knows who this guy is. And I think it's time for America to know who the Republican Party really is. They are not pro-life. They have never been. At best, they are pro-birth. In fact, their actual love and concern for children is as low as David Eastman, this Republican, made in this statement, claiming that it is a cost saving for society if a child dies of abuse. Be sure to share, like, and subscribe to this channel.